Welcome everyone to my first little afternoon coffee break with you. I thought it might be fun in these days since we're all kind of cooped up and it's a beautiful day here in Indiana today. I thought it might be fun if we could uh, spend a few minutes together and I'll just do this uh, once in a while when I have something interesting that I think you might want to see. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me about my steaming process. Hi, Ingrid. It's nice to have a cup of coffee with you all the way from Finland. I, anyway, I've had a lot of people ask me about my steaming process because I made my own homemade steamer, which I did write about on my journal. So if you're seeing this for the first time and you've never heard of making your own steamer, please hop over to the website carryrightsilk.com and in my journal you'll find an entry with complete details about how I made that steamer and, and how it works. <laughs> so let me put my coffee cup down so we don't get coffee and anything important. And first things first, here is the piece that I painted with you yesterday that I had started on Saturday in that very first Facebook Live uh, circus <laughs> that we did here from my dining room, which I can't bear to tear down because I'm actually enjoying living with it like this. And Danny said he didn't care if it stayed up, so I've left it up. So now that this has sat overnight, it needs to be steam set to make the dyes color fast. So silk painters use all kinds of different material uh, to sandwich their silk between. I like to use newsprint for these smaller pieces. I find that it works just fine and I use it, the newsprint after the fact as sketch paper so it doesn't go straight into the trash when I've ruined it. But the reason why you need to steam silk between pieces, you have to sandwich it in something absorbent. The reason you do that is because dyes can still bleed and as the steam process is working on the silk, you don't want any of the silk to bleed back on itself. And that's gonna make more sense to you once I roll this up. So I have just two pieces of newsprint two times on my table here. And then I'm gonna cover it with two more sheets of newsprint on top to make a little sandwich out of it. And if I was working right now with a much darker color of dye, I would, hi Pamela, I would certainly use more newsprint or more protection for the silk uh, because I am very paranoid about things bleeding back on itself. So we make a little silk sandwich and I'm avoiding my edge and I'll show you why in just a second. And then I carefully and this takes practice, you guys, getting this roll started. Uh, when I first started silk painting and, and trying to steam things, this was a nightmare for me. Probably because I was, right off the bat, I was making things that were 45 inches by 84 inches. And so I was down with my very chubby self on the floor with cats in my face trying to roll this massive piece of fabric and it was always really traumatic and sweaty and I hated doing it. Now that I'm working on scarves and small bandanas, this is really easy. So it all gets rolled up into this little tube and then I tape it shut with some masking tape and it doesn't take much. I've never had a problem with these things coming unrolled, but I tape it on areas where I feel like the paper is gonna stick up, like down here at the bottom. Hi friends, Susan, Danielle, welcome to my coffee break. And the reason I'm taping these down is I don't want any water droplets of steam, you know, condensation that gets created in my steamer. I don't want it to catch on these edges and run down and bleed down onto the silk. And I also don't want this rolled to get fatter and fatter and fatter as it steams and then have this touch the side of the steamer. 
because you can't let this get wet at all because it will, again, cause the dyes to run and we don't want that. So I've avoided the edge. Hi, Maxine. Thanks for coming to my coffee break. I've avoided the, the edge of the paper with the silk. Hi, Rebecca. Because I'm gonna use this, this is just a metal skewer from a barbecue set that we had on hand. And I'm gonna skewer this through the paper. And this is just what I do. All silk painters have their own methods, you guys. Don't, if you're a silk painter, and I know a couple of you are out there watching, I realize you may not do it this way. This is how I do it. Um, and I've skewered it. I have a hole in it now. I don't know if you can see that. And I've, I've fashioned this really high tech tool, you guys. Look at this. I mean, I think I may could, maybe could sell those. That's a, that's a paper clip. Wow, we. <laughs> and some yarn. Wow. <laughs> really uh, mind boggling stuff here, but I'm using that paper clip as like a needle to thread the yarn through it so that you see here oh this is why live tv is so fun i wonder what's going to happen okay so i strung that through you see and i'm going to make a little loop and the reason why i'm doing this is because my steamer pipe, which I'm gonna show you in just a second, my steamer pipe is really long and I really want my piece to hang down lower inside the steamer so that it will be as hot as possible. And I just tie a little knot in it. So there we go. Now we have this tube with a loop on the end of it. Now let me show you the steamer real quick. I promised you under 10 minutes for a coffee break, so I'm moving fast. Let me see if I can get this without banging into my light overhead. Okay, can you see this thing? This is my homemade steamer. This is a, can you hear it? An aluminum or steel or whatever kind of metal this is. This is a, a very high tech invention here, folks. This is a, a stove pipe from Lowe's. I think it cost me, I don't know, $10 maybe. It is a five foot or six foot section um, and it's about eight inches in diameter. And it's just, you know, you can see the, the furnace tape here. And I've used furnace tape to attach my pipe to the steamer basket from a rice cooker that came with this rice cooker. Danielle, this is your rice cooker that you gave me and it's fine, it does the job, but I have to tell you secretly, it has an auto shut off and I kind of hate it and I keep using it because I'm too cheap to buy a new one because this one's working, but every hour it kicks off and so I have to go push the power button and push the steam button again. Again, it's not a big deal, it's just that I have to set the timer on my phone because of course I always forget that it's going and then it sits and turns off and I don't realize it's turned off. So at any rate, of course, I'm using a rice cooker because water goes in the reservoir down here. Again, there's a steam basket here. So it's a, it's a plate that has holes in it and that's important because I don't want boiling water to shoot up and dribble on my paper because again I want the silk to stay dry during this process and that's it you guys it ends up happening if I can how am I doing on time we're getting to be right at 10 minutes here I don't know if you can see this oh and I'm hung up on my mic cord here here we go let me try to turn this so you can see, you can't really see it. I have notches at the top of the pipe so that this skewer 
goes through like this. Let me get closer to the camera here for you. The skewer just goes through the little hanger that I made. And then this whole thing gets lowered down inside the steamer. And then I just put a blanket, just a small blanket. It's a crib blanket actually, um, that I fold up and it's really thick batting. So it works as a insulation on the top of the pipe to hold the steam inside the pipe. And like I told you during the live video Saturday, all of that steam, the whole purpose of that steam setting is to permanently bond the uh, pigment that is within the dye to the protein that is within the cell structure inside that silk fiber. So it's completely color fast. So like I told you, everything I steam, I steam for at least three hours. This is a fairly light piece, meaning the, the colors aren't super dark. So three hours will be fine. And my favorite thing in the world is to get up in the morning and to have something waiting for me to steam. And I'll first thing, I get my coffee, I get the steamer going, and I sit down to read. And it's this pleasant gurgling of my steamer going while I'm sitting there of a morning. So that is my steaming process. That's my homemade steamer. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. All right, good to see all of you. I hope you're staying well and sane and healthy in these very strange days. I care about what's going on. I'm not trying to ignore what's going on, but I am trying to give you a joyful little visit and a joyful little break. I need it and I'm, I'm hopeful that this can be somewhat of just a fun little encouragement in the afternoon. So thanks for tuning in and saying hi. <laughs> it's nice to see all of you.